Hello, for the Easter art box, we are going to be making a Easter bunny, um, or we're going to make the Easter chicken. And they're both got holes in so that they can sit on the nest, which is gonna have uh, Cadbury's mini eggs in. So you'll be able to sit them on there and hide the eggs and have a bit of a reveal. So you'll be getting a box of mini eggs. How exciting. Okay, so um, you'll get your clay in a pouch like this, which will be easier to um, probably just cut the end off. Um, obviously don't use the scissors that are too sharp. Um, you'll be getting your pot of slip, which is your clay glue that we'll be using to stick, stick all the ears on and nose on and all the little bits. Okay, also you're going to need a ruler and a placemat to work on or some cardboard. Okay, so uh, you might need a little pot of water, um, but you might not. It depends how the clay is behaving if you need to make it a little bit softer. So I've supplied a little cardboard ring, which is going to be the base um, of the little animal that you're going to make to make sure that you get it the right size. Uh, the foil that I've given you, which should be this size, what we're going to do is get this and wrap the foil around it with about five millimetres overlapping the edge. So it's going to look like that. Uh, once you've got that round then you can overlap around the cardboard ring so that it stays in place. doesn't have to be too pretty. So okay so it's like that at the moment. What you're going to do then is the other end and we want to make it look like a cone a bit like a rocket I suppose so gently scrunch the top together into a point so we're just making the inside of our rabbit or our chicken so you can put your finger inside and just gently squeeze all around um, until you think you've got the right shape. So it should be like that. I mean, it doesn't have to be too perfect because it's going to have clay on. Um, so the next bit we're going to do is to make a tummy because if we just covered that in clay now, he wouldn't look so fun. So he needs to have a little bit of a fat tummy. Um, so I shall um, get the clay out of the bag and then we can go on to the next bit. Okay. So we're going to make our chick or bunny body now. Um, but before we do that, actually, we're going to make the nest. So with a pen and your ruler, your nest needs to be six centimetres diameter like this. So with a piece of cardboard or a piece of paper, just mark six centimetres and then turn your paper around or then do six centimetres the other way so that you've got four marks and then roughly join them up so that it looks like a circle. Okay. So this is going to be where you, you start your nest. Now, um, you've opened your clay from your bag and we need to rip a piece off. And what is always best is to squidge it into a ball shape. I just find it easier every time I'm going to make something. If you start off with a ball, um, and then it always has a smooth surface. Okay, so give it a roll. 
Okay, so this piece is about a bit smaller than a golf ball. Okay, right, so then we're going to flatten it down onto your piece of cardboard or your paper. Just keep pushing it down with your hand until you get to your six centimeters. That's pretty good. Okay, so it, if you were to peel it off, uh, it measures between five millimeters and eight millimeters. Okay, that's normally what I use, the measurement I use for all the layers of my clay. So between five and eight millimeters thick. So that's your base. The next part is to rip another piece off and now we're going to make your sort of snake shape to go around the edge so you're making it into a long snake shape so just keep turning it pinching it and to make it longer and until you want it to be a usual as what I've said before is between five and eight millimeters okay so let's have a quick measure yeah so it's say about eight millimeters diameter and once you've got it that sort of size, then you can give it a very gentle roll to make it smoother. If you push too hard, it will flatten it out. So just gently rock it backwards and forwards all along the length of it. Till it's you know no more than one centimetre diameter and you can actually just stretch oh broken a bit well there you go if you if you stretch it too much it will break but hopefully this now is going to be long enough that you can do that with it and so if I break that piece off where it joins I'll just work out that measurement for you so it's going to be approximately 18 centimeters long so just lay your snake shape shape oh that is a bit long so less than 18 okay so it like looks like this at the moment now I can see this is a bit fat and that's a bit skinny. So I'm going to take that off and just roll it again until you get the consistent thickness all the way along. If it if it if you get creases, don't worry about it too much because we're going to we're going to make this texture on it anyway to look like a nest. Okay, so that's that's okay. Move it around. You might need to break the end off again. And you're trying to make a nice circle shape like that. Okay. And this is where you get your, your tools. Now, should have given you a tool with a this serrated edge all right so what we're going to do is scrape 
downwards to get the clay to join together. Do that all round. Okay, and then we're going to do the um, inside, which is a little bit more fiddly. You might be able to turn the tool round for a smaller end, and you push the clay downwards and then twist your nest round. Keep this hand in the same position, twist it around so that it all joins up. Okay, like that. Right, and then now we're going to do the texture. So it's a little bit high, I think. So we push it down a little bit. Because when we put our eggs in at the end, we don't want the eggs falling off the edge. So it has to have that dip for the eggs to settle into. Um, and now this is the pretty easy, quick bit, is to start doing your texture. And you just go around the edge at an angle to create this sort of straw nest effect. Okay, do that all the way around the edge. So you're twisting your nest and holding your hand with the tool in the same position and just going up and down until it meets. Okay, right, so now we've got this. Uh, do the same for the edge. Hold it in your hand um, and you can hold it like this sort of angle. And with the tool, again, not straight down, but at an angle and twist the nest around and do this texture effect all the way around the edge. Just keep twisting and tapping the edge of the clay. Okay. Now some bits are a bit wonky, that's up to you if you want to try and smooth all that out. But a nest is always a bit messy anyway, so you can just leave it like that. Okay, so we're there. And then we just want to do the inside of the nest. Um, so you're just doing the same effect and just trying to break it all up so that it has a texture on it. Turn it around in your hand. Uh, to get this texture. All right, so you've done around the edge and then you've got to do the middle. So just start to, again, just turn the nest around Keep this hand in the same position um, and just tap away with the texture tool and eventually you'll get it all covered. So it's like that. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay, so that's the nest done. Because if we get the nest done and then we know we've got enough clay ready to make your piece. So, move that out of the way, and then you can move on to the body. And as I said, we were going to do the fat tummy first, um, so break a piece off. You can keep this under the, your wet flannel um, so it doesn't dry out. Um, so. This time we're going to pinch a piece of clay till it's 
between five and eight millimeters thick. I'd say this is probably five actually, five millimeters or less even. So it's quite thin. Um, so you've got a piece like that. You've got your foil cone shape that's hollow. Um, and this isn't really looking like a tummy at the moment. So what I want to do is rip that piece in half so that you've got a longer strip that's going to go around the middle of his tummy. So this is probably two centimetres high. Try not to squeeze this too much, otherwise you'll collapse it. You can always put your fingers inside and open it up again. So we're going to put this piece about mm, one and a half centimetres from the bottom. Just lay it on. Okay, and then with this other piece, um, I'm just going to take that piece, that end piece off. And then wrap it around. So now all I need is just another piece there. So just rip another bit of clay off. Squeeze and pinch. And then you can join them up. Now, obviously, it's a bit rough, so put your fingers inside and then gently make your tummy meet up and use your fingers to fill in the gaps. Okay, so it should look like that all the way around. Um, then basically, now we're going to do the top layer. So, same principle. Just grab a piece of clay. Pinch and squeeze till it's about five millimetres thick. Maybe a bit less. Um, and then you can start to put it on. So you can start from the top. If you happen to have a a pointy piece you can put that at the top and just lay it over grab your next piece of clay pinch um, yeah try and make one end a bit pointier because then you can join that up there so now we're gonna straight away start joining that edge up okay and then you should only need one more bit to join up that gap so pinch to five millimeters maybe a bit less so you've got a point lay that on and then with your fingers just smooth over until they're joined up so you should it should start to look like this um, just carry on and then so you make sure you go over the tummy that you made earlier so it should start to look like quite a fat cone shape um, you can pinch it down to the bottom and just do the same thing lay it over Smooth over your edges. And just turn your clay around so you can see 
what bit fits best. So I'm going to do that. And then you see this bit's quite long. Well, that's fine. Well, I'm going to overlap it now. So it goes right inside. So you can overlap your clay into that shape. So just keep getting a piece of clay, flattening it out to five millimetres or less. Um, obviously, I've got a bit of a gap here. So you can just tear your clay to fit in those that space, smooth it in, and then wrap it over, ready to do the inside. So we're nearly there. Okay. Roll it over the edge. Now to do the inside, it's fairly easy. So if you make it into a pointy shape, fairly long pointy shape, then you can try and get it all the way inside. You might want to curl it up a bit or yeah so that bit try and curl it up a bit so you can get it inside poke it in and then you know you've reached right inside there push it down with your fingers and then make sure all the foil is covered you can the clay, the clay is nice and soft, so you can start smoothing things about naturally. So you should really have only one or two bits left to go. So I have this bit here. If your fingers are tiny, then obviously you've got to try and make it long enough that you can poke it right in because you won't necessarily be able to get your fingers all the way in. So a nice long piece like that. Curl it up slightly, poke it in, wiggle it about, and then you can you might be able to get your fingers in. If you can't, then you could always use your tool and Get it in there, like this piece. I'm going to drop that in. And with your tool, you can just try and get all the foil covered. Now, you don't have to get all the foil covered. It's just so that it looks nicer when you look inside your piece. It looks like it's finished. We don't want too much clay on the lip edge otherwise we're never going to get our chocolate eggs inside so okay so this is kind of it at the moment and now it's time to tidy it all up so just spend probably five or ten minutes taking bits of clay off um, making sure the foil is covered and smoothing it all with your fingers. I mean, the clay is soft enough. It's really easy to move about. If your clay is a bit harder, uh, use your tool, but I think your fingers are the best. Okay, so. What I'm going to do now is now I've tidied up that edge is to, with a smooth tool, without the jagged edge, is to start taking bits off to try and smooth out the body. 
So twist it around in your hand and start to scrape. I mean, I tend to scrape it and wipe it on my finger just because then it's a bit quicker. But So move it around in your hand and scrape the clay because you're trying to make it all nice and smooth. Uh, ready to put on either the ears and the nose and the uh, little hands for the rabbit and the tail. Um, and then for the chicken, uh, we'll put on the beak and the frill, which is the top bit on his head. Uh, or the waddle, which is the flappy bits under his beak and his wings. Okay, so you're just moving that around, gradually scraping away the clay until it's the shape you want. I mean, I've got a bit of a gap there, so I'm going to just fill that in with the clay and move it around. So we keep doing this all the way around. Filling it in where there's any little holes. Keep turning your tool backwards and forwards. So it's a bit like ice, icing a cake. Just trying to make it gradually Get it all nice and smooth. Okay, so it's getting better, but it does take a little bit of time. If you get too much on your tool, just wipe it off and then you've always got your little bit there on your thumb to fill in the gaps if you need it. So up and down, all the way around until you've got your cone shape but it's got a bit of a fat tummy so it's starting to look a bit more like a pear shape. Oh, an avocado. Um, okay, so we're getting there. Looks more or less there. So the inside, again, just try and make sure that it's the same thickness all the way around. It just helps for drying and when it's drying, if it's different thicknesses, then you, you might end up with cracks. That's completely normal. It's air dry clay, um, and that's what happens. Uh, different temperatures affect it. Um, obviously, it's got foil inside it, so that's going to affect it as well. Um, but we're going to try and make this bottom area flat. So that when it stands up, it's going to be level. Now, so if you put it on there, you can see it's like a pear shape or an avocado. Um, and you turn it all around and then you can start to see where the lumps and bumps are. And if it's straight, you know, just move it around. And we've we've scraped a lot of the clay off now um, so you can start to s scrape it and move it around with your well I like to use my thumb um, all the way around until you've got your smooth shape so again yeah, twist it and now I'm dragging my finger down. Okay. 
So that's the top area is looking okay now. It's just this bottom area. See, there's lumpy, bumpy bits. So grab a bit of clay on your tool and smooth that in. There's another bit there. Smooth it in. So actually I'm just going to go around with a tool and lightly go up and down, smoothing your clay out. It's obviously not a very quick process, but it needs to have a smooth surface for it to look nice at the end. Okay. Start to go around with your finger. Um, if it starts to get really, if the clay starts to get too hard to move around, you can always dip your finger in a bit of water um, the only problem with using too much water is it ends up quite slimy and then it's it's sticky and then the clay is more difficult to control. So, I mean, this is this is starting to go harder, harder now because the ears got to it. So, use your fingers and your thumbs, just keep turning it around in your hand to get it smooth uh, and then the next part will be making the other little pieces okay so I'm going to leave it there for now you can carry on for a little bit longer making it as perfect as you want it to be um, and then the next stage will be moving on to either making the uh, ears nose little hands and the bunny tail um, so this one's dried and as you can see it's dried with a crack that's as I said it's not completely normal for that to happen sometimes so with your slip that I've supplied you you can dip your finger in it fill in the gap um, and that, that's, you know, it's like clay glue. So that's that's the rabbit. And the chicken will be making the waddle, the beak, the frill, and his wings. His wings are, is just a, it's just a circle and cut in half. Okay, so um, stop there and then we'll um, go on to making the next pieces. So we're going to make the bits and pieces for the chicken. So first of all, we're going to make the frill, which is the top of his head. So if you grab a piece of clay and it will be about a Malteser size, roll it about in your hand, make it nice and smooth. Okay, um, then you're going to flatten it out so that it measures about five millimeters thick so if you do it into a circle shape that's a good start okay right and once you've got your flat circle shape you can see where it's going to go but we need to adapt it a little bit so put that down briefly um, you're going to make, turn your dome, avocado, pear shape, turn them around till you find the best side for your front. Um, okay, so, so that's my front. Now I'm going to make um, the whole, the gap where the frill is going to sit. So with your tool, just push down and open up a gash shape in the top of his head where we're going to put the frill 
Now you'll reach the foil, but that's okay. So just push down and make a gap. And then what we're gonna do is put a piece, some slip, some wet clay that I supplied you in the pot onto that gap, because that's gonna be our glue. If you were just to plonk the frill straight on top, when it dries out, there's a good chance it will just fall off. So that's why we use the slip. So with your round shape now, we want to make these three shapes. So what I'm gonna do is with my finger, push down to make a dent like that. And then push down again on the other side. So you can see there's gonna be two dents here now we see you're pushing the clay around so we need to tidy it up so you can pinch the middle part and pinch one side pinch the other and then you just continue to pinch and manipulate the clay until you're happy with your shape um, you can scrape a bit of the clay away with a tool and turn it over Scrape that bit around to make that side flat. Okay, and on the top there's a bit missing there, so you you can either use another little bit of wet um, bit of clay, or you can fill it in with a bit of slip, whatever you fancy. Okay, that's made it a bit neater. Okay, and then this is going to fit in that gap. So turn your piece around. And then we could just push it on like that, but I think what we're going to do is take a slice off the bottom. You can do it in your fingers or you can do it on the board. So chop a piece off like that. Okay. And then push and wiggle that in place. And then we're going to tidy it up. So make sure that that all gets cleaned up on that side. And turn it around. Clean it up on that side. You can fill in any gaps with spare clay or with a bit of slip. Now obviously these bits are sticking out a bit so you can always just hold on to the frill and just push the clay around so that it goes in a bit. Smooth it out with your finger. Smooth it out, make it look nice and neat. Okay, so that's fine. Right, then decide which is your front. So this is going to be my front of the chicken. So we can now make his beak. So grab a smaller piece of clay. And I will start off with a, a round ball. So it's smaller than a Malteser this time. Roll the clay around in your palm of your hand to make a smooth ball. Okay, then pinch it so it becomes a flat circle. Rotate it so you've got five millimeters thick circle and to make it into a beak put them down on your desk let's move this out of the way put it down in there and with your tool you're gonna cut a triangle piece out so cut and then pull it away so that when you pick it up 
we're left with that shape. Okay, so you've got your beak shape and now we need to position it. So you imagine this is the front. Draw your imaginary line down to about there, about a centimetre down. Make a little mark. That's where your nose, your beak is going to be. So just scrape a, a bit of a hole so that we can push the beak into that area so it will so it won't fall off when it starts to dry out. A little bit of slip in there for glue. And the beak is going to go in that gap. So if I turn it around for you. Okay, so. Okay, push and wiggle without distorting the beak and then you can then start to scrape away the excess clay to tidy it up. Okay. And then to just manipulate the beak a little bit until you think you're happy with the shape. Okay, squeeze and pinch. Fine, that's okay. Just going to tidy that up a bit. Um, now we're going to put his eyes in. So with the beak facing you. Do the left one, so up to the left, push your tool in, twist it around and pull it out. And then decide where it's going to be on the other side to match. Push in, wiggle and pull out. Obviously I made that one a bit too big. So you can just push, touch the clay slightly with your finger. Okay, and now we're going to make his waddle which are these strange little things under his beak. Okay, so what we're going to do is grab a piece of clay. Um, roll it slightly in your palm. I mean, I've made this a bit too long now, so I'm going to take one bit end off. So you've got a bit of a sausage shape. Twist it in your fingers. So it's kind of like that. It's almost like he's got a little worm. Okay. Then you're going to bend it in half. Um, if it looks like it needs a bit of work on it, just scrape the clay around just to smooth it off. Okay. That's fine. And then as we've done before, get your tool, make a hole under his beak, scratch a hole like that, add a little bit of slip as glue. And then We can put his water on and again push and wiggle into place. Okay. So if you hold him in your hand and then you can start to just tidy up the edge. You can push it down a little bit at the top. Okay, that's fine. And the uh, wings are very simple. Grab a piece of clay. Um, 
how big would I say? Um, bigger than a Malteser. Maybe the size of a gobstopper. Smaller than a golf ball. Okay, so roll that around in your hand, in your palm, to make it smooth. So you've got this nice shape. Now what we're going to do is put him on the board and squash flat so that it's about five millimeters thick and so just push down with your hand into a circle okay just check that it's not too stuck well, actually it is but okay if you're working on cardboard you'll be fine if you're working on a mat it might get a bit stuck so i'm just going to show you that again and what we can do is do that squash it till it's five millimeters thick and then with your tool we are going to cut it in half And then you should be able to slide it underneath and lift it. Okay, so you've got a semicircle. So if you've done all this cut this on cardboard, it won't have stuck at all. Uh, and the other side, there's a bit of a mess. Just smooth that over well that can be on the chicken side anyway so don't worry too much okay okay that's that's going to be a chicken wing It's best off to smooth it off and make it look nice, white, and you know before it's attached. Okay, you've got your semicircle, and you see with this chicken, that's the angle you're going for. So get your chicken facing one way. Well, so his beak's on the right hand side. If you're doing it the same as me, um, with your tool. We're going to uh, scratch halfway down the body in the middle, just kind of like this. A little bit of slip as your glue. And then your wing uh, will do a little bit of a scratch as well, as we don't want it to fall off. A little bit of slip. And then with the semicircle facing down, we're going to position it like that. Now I've decided actually it's looking a little bit big for this chicken. So we can take a bit off. If you're happy with yours, then go for it. If you're not happy, always start again because you'll always be annoyed with yourself if you don't get it right so get it right now okay there we go and use your push and wiggle until you've got rid of the air and then get your tool and smooth away any slip or excess clay. Okay, so that front bit needs to be pushed down more 
then the back part of the wing, the back part of the wing can stick out a bit. So if you look from the back, you see it's sticking out more. Okay, so smooth it off. There's your as one wing, and then we're going to do the other side. So turn the chicken round, scratch halfway down, and in the middle of the body. And just slip. And with your other semicircle wing, scrape it off the bat off the base. Hopefully it hasn't st stuck too badly. Just give it a smooth off if it has. Okay, nearly there. And then turn that chicken around as well. So again, it was it, this wing was too big, so I'm going to do the same and just nip a bit off. Smooth it again with the fingers. Okay, scratch and slip and then position the wing, push down to get the excess air out and then scrape away any of the slip and spare clay to smooth it off. Okay, so now when you're facing to the front, what can you see? This one's pointing down and this one's pointing up. So this is where you do the finer details. You just decide how do you want the wings? I'm going to have mine slightly up. So just make sure they're looking the same and the same height as well one might be too far up and one, one might be too far down so i'm happy with those now and then let's clean it all up okay so we finished our chicken that's cool. So now he can sit on a bit of cardboard or your mat for a couple of days. Might even take three days because at the moment it's winter um, and it's cold. So it might take a while. If um, if you really want to get on with it and you um, want to speed up the process, you can put this air dry clay in the oven um, with parental guidance, adult, adults guidance on the lowest setting possible on some grease proof paper on a baking tray um, and then just have a look after about half an hour and if if your chicken is um, is going pale grey like this you know all over then you know that it's done um, if you get any cracks which are completely normal just touch them all in with a bit of slip um, you know, up here might be a crack. Um, touch it in with some slip. Um, then you could even give it um, all these dried bits of clay you can scrape off or you can get a bit of sandpaper and make it really smooth. Uh, so then we'll get on to painting. I've gone ahead and painted one coat in white already. And as you can see, I thought I'd show you what can happen is that I held the chicken by the frill and it came off. So what I've had to do is just with some slip is to put it into the hole, put that back on and fill it in and just leave it to dry. So 
when you're painting it, don't hold it by the beak or the frill because they're likely to come off because it's quite heavy now. So when you're painting it, this is um, this is your brush and your sponge. So dip it in your white. So just hold it by the top, by the head, and start to paint down the bottom first. All the way around. And then just work your way up to the top. Um, so we do that all over, do two layers of white, white and then do your nest as well. And then you might have to just push it into the little holes with that. Okay, so do two layers of white and then we'll go on to the next part. So now you've painted your chicken all white and you've done two coats that you, so that you can't see any clay coming through. We're going to now start doing the face. So first of all, um, you get your little paintbrush and we're going to dip it in the black. And what you do is you wipe so that you get a nice fine point. You wipe the paintbrush on the edge. Keep wiping it like this till you get a nice fine point. And then we're just going to poke it in the eyes. Okay, that's all we need really for the um, for the eyes. So wash your paintbrush out. So you've got a nice clean paintbrush, and now we're going to paint the red onto his wattle. To his onto the frill next. If you make a mistake, don't try and get the paint off right now, just let it dry and then you can always paint over it with the white because the good thing about acrylic paint is it's very opaque so you can paint right over it. need a couple of coats of red just to make it nice and bright and dense. Just gonna do the paint strokes going upwards so that they look even so if you do see any paint strokes they're all in going in the same direction okay so that's that bit done I'm gonna need to wash your paint brush again make sure it's dry with a bit of tissue and you can move on to the beak um, so we're gonna do it in this pale pink color I think we'll need two coats of the pink really. I think it's going to be fine because it's quite pale and it's going on white anyway. So that's the 
the body part done and then we move on to doing the spots um, so we're going to use this purple colour and there should be a little stick that I supplied in your kit and the stick will make a nice round shape okay so we're going to start on the front as you can see I've done the nest already so it's going to look like that so I'm going to go down the front of his tummy first and so okay You should be able to get a couple of dabs in the paint before you need to reapply the paint. So one, two, dab. One, two, three. Oh, just about got three, not quite. Okay. So it's one, two, dab. One, two, reapply your paint. I'm not going to go too close to his face because I don't want to detract from his eyes. So I'm going to go around, okay, so turn him on his side now and we're going to start to work on the side of the chicken. Again, if you make mistakes, don't worry about it right now, just let it dry and then paint over it with the white. So I'm just going to turn them around so you can see the front again. So what I would do now is then work, start working around his face on this side so that they look the same. So that's it really, just go all around the chicken with the spots, um, you can paint the inside of the chicken with white so that then you can fill it up with your mini eggs and then you can sit on the nest and then when you pull the chicken up you'll reveal all your eggs. Um, I hope, you, hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and um, happy Easter. <laughs>